Hi everyone, thank you very much for joining me again. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate how to configure a router on a stick. Um, so this is basically used when you don't have a layer 3 switch and you're trying to do inter VLAN routing. Um, so in my example here I've got um, a switch um, and it's got two VLANs on there, a VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 and I'm trying to simulate um, end devices using just routers at the moment but if, if this was a PC for example you'd have a PC connected to VLAN 10 and a PC connected to VLAN 20 um, and the, if the switch is not layer 3 capable um, for, for this device to route to this device i.e. router 1 to router 2 um, it has to go through some kind of a layer 3 device because it's on a different subnet so um, the best way to do that is to put a router which is a layer 3 device and create something called a router on a stick so effectively what you're doing is you're creating uh, a trunk from this router here so router 3 down to the switch you create a trunk and then you create some sub interfaces which belong to the VLANs all right? um, so in my case we're going to do VLAN 10 um, and VLAN 20 on this side um, so we'll create the two VLANs, we'll create the trunk port, and then we create sub-interfaces uh, using 802.1Q trunking protocol, uh, and then assign them into VLAN 10 and 20 respectively. Um, once, once that configuration is done, um, you just need to put a static route on router 1 for it to be able to reach the router 2. Um, in, in reality, that would normally be... Um, a, a PC or or an end user, uh, but because we're just trying to simulate the example, you you would have two PCs, for example, here, v to v, one in VLAN 10, one in VLAN 20, and for that to to reach each other, you'd have a default gateway configured on router R1 or the end user, and a default gateway on R2 or the end user, and that default gateway would point to the router IP address we got here, so 20.1.1.1 and 10.1.1.1 respectively. Um, so the the job of that router would be to take data from VLAN 10 and then process it and return it back into VLAN 20 because that's the destination packet. Okay, so from, from the configuration tasks, what we're going to do is we're going to log on to switch 1. We'll um, create VLAN 10 and 20. We'll log on to router 1 and give that an IP address. Uh, we'll log on to router 2 and give that an IP address as well. Um, then on the switch itself, we're going to assign um, the Ethernet port connected to router 1 uh, into VLAN 10. And then the Ethernet port connected to VLAN uh, 20 um, and assign that port into VLAN 20. Um, then finally, we're going to configure the interface which is connected to our, our layer 3 router which is going to be as a trunk port, so an 802.1Q trunk. Um, we'll then configure some sub-interfaces on router 3. So um, for each VLAN, we'll create a sub-interface. So VLAN uh, 10, we'll create um, Ethernet 00.10. And for VLAN 20, we'll create um, an Ethernet 00.20. Uh, so once those sub-interfaces are configured, we'll put an IP address on each of these devices. Uh, sorry, interfaces. Uh, and then finally, we put a static route on R1 and R2 for it to be able to reach each other. So R1 will point to the IP address of the sub-interface on VLAN 10, and R2 will point to the sub-interface uh, of R3 on VLAN 20. Okay, so for my lab, I'm uh, using the Cisco IRU lab. Um, I've got... Uh, a couple of switches and some routers in here. So I've already fired up uh, switch one, router one, router two, and router three. So they're they're already up and running as they show in this green. Okay. All right. So this is my switch. So if we go into enable, conf t, just give that a host name. That's w1. All right. And then we we'll create the VLAN. So we we'll create VLAN 10. Give that a name. Um, R1 VLAN 10 and then we'll create a VLAN 20 give that a name we'll call it R2 
VLAN 20. Okay, let's just check that it's configured those VLANs. Yep, so we've got the, the two VLANs configured. Uh, what we need to do is assign the port. So we've got Ethernet 01 and Ethernet 02, which are connected to router 1 and router 2 respectively. Okay, so if we go to conf t, interface Ethernet 0 slash 1, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10. So that one's done. Come out of that one, and we'll do Ethernet 0 slash 2. Ethernet 0 slash 2. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 20. So those two ports are configured. Let's just quickly check that they've assigned them to the VLANs. So there's your VLAN 10, and you've got Ethernet 01 and VLAN 20. That's done as well. Okay. Right, so we'll uh, configure router 1 and router 2 next, um, and then we'll do the trunk configuration, which is the key um, to this uh, whole exercise. Okay, so router 1, um, that's my router 1. Let's just expand that out slightly. Okay, say no to that. While that's doing that, I'll just boot up router 2 as well. Say no to that. And router three as well. Right. Okay. So router one is ready. So just do an enable. Conf t. Host name r one. Okay. Show ip int brief. So it's Ethernet zero zero. We need to configure. So go conf t. Interface Ethernet zero slash zero. IP address 10.1.1.100.255.255.255.0 and do a no shut on that. So I still need to configure a default gateway, but we'll we'll do that slowly as we go along with exercise. Okay, uh, let's do router two now. Okay, router two is all booted up. Let's go into that. Enable. Oops. Ah. Oh. Enable, conf t, hostname r2, and then same interface, Ethernet 0 slash 0. This time we're going to configure an IP address of 20.1.1.100. And then do a nice shot. Okay. Okay, so those two routers are ready. The switch is ready for access port. So we now do the the router on a stick config and the trunk configuration on the switch as well. Okay, um, so if we move along to the switch again, so the switch port is Ethernet zero slash three. So conf t interface Ethernet zero slash three switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q and switch port mode trunk and that's it um, you can restrict the VLANs allowed you could say switch port trunk allowed VLANs 10 comma 20 so that will only allow VLANs 10 and 20 across that trunk um, okay so the trunks configured let's configure router 3 now okay the router 3 is now booted up let's just expand that out slightly Enable conf t interface ethernet 0 slash 0. Just do a no shut on that to bring that up. Exit. And there's no other config required on that. We're going to create a sub interface. So interface ethernet 0 slash 0 dot. And then you have to give it an, a tag or a number. You can call it whatever you like, but it's uh, best to call it the same as the VLAN tag that we're creating. So we're going to, we're going to create one for VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 so it just makes sense to make that Ethernet 0 slash 0 dot 10 you could make it anything you like and the way to configure that is encapsulation dot 1q and then the VLAN ID so as I said you could have 1 to 4094 but we're using VLAN 10 okay um, now we need to assign an IP address to this so the IP address of this is 10.1.1.1 
to five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. Um, we can exit out of that. Now we create the second sub interface. Interface Ethernet zero slash zero. This is for VLAN twenty, so I'm going to give it a tag of twenty. And then encapsulation dot one q twenty. Um, and then IP address. This one's my VLAN twenty, so I'm going to go twenty dot one. Oops. Twenty dot one dot one dot one space two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. Okay, let's just quickly check that's configured it. Yep, so, so my trunk's configured, the routers are configured, I've still got some static routes to do, but we should be able to ping the routers. Uh, so if we just do a quick ping 10.1.1.100. Yeah, and that's successful. And just quickly do a ping 20.1.1.100. That's the second R2 router, and that can ping as well, right? I uh, forgot to give this guy a host name, so let's just quickly do that. So host name R3. Okay. Um, so if we if we now go back to router router one, for example. So this is the one where I've got the 10.1.100. So we should be able to ping the the VLAN 10 on router R3, which is 10.1.1.1. That's fine. Um, but we shouldn't be able to ping the 20.1.1.100, which is uh, the root R2. So the reason we can't reach that is because there's no static root um, to be able to reach it. Okay. Uh, so now's the time to configure the static root. So if we do a conf t, and then we do an IP root. Oops. Root. 20.1.1.0 space 255.255 ah, I've got finger troubles 255.0 and then the next hop address will be 20.1.1.1 which is the IP address of router 3 okay so that one's done we just need to do uh, router 2 now so router 2 again we can double check so it's just do a ping to 20.1.1 on dot one yes we can ping that but we probably can't ping 10.1.1.100 yeah see the uh, the router one's got a static route but now this router two needs a static route as well to complete the configuration okay so we just need to add that static route and we should be done so ip root 10.1.1.0 space 255.255.255.0 and the next hop address is 20.1.1.1 okay show IP root and you can see the static root is there now yep so we should be able to ping 10.1.1.100 Not quite. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so that's not pinging, so let's have a quick look. Uh, if we look at router one, show IP root. Oh, I don't seem to have a static root there, so if we just have a quick look, uh, show run. Okay, oh, I see you're right. Okay, so I, I've, I've by mistake, I've put the wrong IP address on here, so the next hop should be 10.1.1. So let's do a conf t, finger troubles. And then actually, if I do an IPR, there it is there. If we just do a no to that one, so take that old root off. And then we need to change that, I mean, point it to the correct IP address 10.1.1.1. Okay, so we do show IP root now. Yes, that's there now, so let's try again. Ping 20.1.1.100. Hey, hey, we've got it now. So that's that was a, a mistake on my on my router one config. I misconfigured the static route. Um, so if we just check from router two now, we should be able to ping successfully. Yes, we have. Okay, now you have it. It's a simple, straightforward uh, little mistake by me, but um, 
you know very easy to configure router on a stick just quickly show you the the configuration of router 3 so if you see again um, so you've got the Ethernet 00, zero. You don't have any configuration under that, but what we've created is some sub interfaces. Told it it's an encapsulation dot one Q trunk, and that ten tells it that it's part of VLAN ten. Uh, and then so we've assigned an IP address within VLAN ten, and then we created a second sub interface, Ethernet um, zero zero dot twenty. Again, we said encapsulation dot one Q, but this time by adding the twenty, we've put it into VLAN twenty. And then we've correctly identified the IP address and put it into VLAN 20. So that's basically it. This is how you configure a router on a stick. So now, if you look at the show IP route, you can see that these are connected routes. So the, the 10 is a connected route and the 20 is a connected route. And therefore, it can route in between the two VLANs. And that's how a router on a stick works. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you, that was useful for you. Um, Thanks again. Cheers. Bye-bye.